Swamp here, and welcome to episode 38 of the Great Ace Attorney Adventures. Last time, we were trying to associate, we were trying to basically prove that the Garudas were involved in basically this whole ordeal because one of their books, one of the books from their house was found at the crime scene, it was burnt, and now we're just trying to get them involved so that way we can have some more avenues, only for basically Van Zeke's to counter, and basically get the jury to declare so Seki guilty and now we're probably we're gonna have to do another submission examination that's twice now it's over Mr. Naruto don't give up Mr. Sato have you forgotten the battle isn't over yet you're you're not suggesting of course the defense is the right to another submission examination at this point you could still convince the jurors to change their minds you have one more chance my lord, the defense has to exercise its right to a submission examination. Not again! Every time I'm out of here, you can handle this three ring circus or trial yourself, judge. I'm out! The wine glass shall prosecute! I'm done! You believe you still have tricks up your sleeve? I don't intend to trick anyone. I intend to uncover the truth. This is no time to downcast. As long as there's still a chance, I have to stay strong and determined. Okay, round two. This time, Van Zeke, he's gonna crush another wine. He's gonna crush two wine glasses. That's his exercise. He just has a big block, a big box of wine glasses. He just crushes them one after another. He doesn't even fill them up. He just crushes the wine glasses for the sake of crushing the wine glasses. Just boom, 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 boom. I have considered the, defense's the defense counsel's request for a further summation examination of the jury. And I have determined that the court must uphold the defense's judicial right to this procedure. So, counsel, you will now proceed with your second summation examination. I presume the jury is ready, Mr. Foreman. We are, my lord. Very good. In that case, I must ask each of you now to state clearly and concisely for the court. The grounds on which you find the defendant guilty of his crime. The juror's contentions. The accused left behind evidence at the scene, didn't he? Those three books of his. If there, were, if there was some novel alternative explanation about how the victim was stabbed, I might reconsider. Even if the woman was throwing books, it can't be related to this crime if the window was closed, can it? Terry, it was only a little book, hardly life threatening, even with a direct hit. Look, I just want to get this over with. If I open up the bed, I'll be in a tiny bit of trouble. Come to think of it, we had a fire at home a while ago, it gave me the sneezes. Whom um, yes, whom um, yes, considering more tangible arguments for all the members of the jury this time around, it seems. With no noble, with one noble exception, of course. My learned student friend was unable to find fault in the previous witness's testimony. So the court must accept the fact that it was indeed the accused seen fleeing from the scene. And moreover, no one else was even at the scene to commit the crime! Well, well, if the judge, if the eyewitnesses are correct, it would seem as if the con conclusion is somewhat set in stone. I fail to see how it can be argued any other way. That means, I'm afraid, that during the summation examination, it's essential that you establish some other tangible explanation for the facts. But how? What would even consider constitute a tangible explanation here? Isn't it obvious? Who stabbed the woman? And how? Those two details are all you need to provide. Simply give us a name and a method by which the attack was conducted. And there I was thinking this might be hard. But Mr. Naruto, you have to do it. Otherwise, this reality will be the... This really will be where the trial ends. Uh, no pressure then. That's quite enough preamble. Proceed with the summation examination, please. I presume you are prepared, counsel. Oh, yes, my lord. All right, Rianasuke, focus your mind now. Clearly, the key to this submission examination is going to be juror number four, the maid, or should I say, Mrs. Garadeb. We have a book that disappeared from the Garadeb's house on the evening of the incident, and the fourth book found in the victim's hand. There 
must be a way to link these two. Yes, that's what we have to find. Using every technique I've learned in my short career so far, whatever it takes. Don't forget to keep an eye on Mrs. Garadev and how she reacts, even to the things other people say. Hong examination. The defense's rebuttal. Okay, I'm just looking. Okay, well first we'll first press you. Hold it. Does that have anything to do with your decision about the defense culpability in this case? Sorry, what was that? You allowed to speak up, lad. Could you tell us more about that fire? It was last winter. My grandchildren baked me a lovely cake on my birthday. Look, look, it looked good, but it tasted like crap. I then threw the cake at them and yelled at them. It had 75 candles on the top it did. What a sight to behold it was. You put candles on a cake? What, was it some kind of devil worship? I swear, just this game. First ouchie and thinking that damn you is a prayer and not reading the suitcase thinking that birthday cakes are devil worship. <laughs> of course not, it was an angel cake to celebrate my birthday, obviously. It seems that it's a common custom here in Great Britain, Mr. Naruto. Anyways, I mustered all my puff to blow them out. Only I must have blown wrongs them out. The flames didn't go out, but the candles went flying all over the room. The furniture gone and everything went up. The whole place filled with smoke. Definitely sounds like devil worship to me. And by the sneezes, I presume you meant me a cold. But did you catch a cold from a fire? What a fiasco was. The grandchildren, bless them, threw water over me as they tried to put the flames. And then, because the whole room had filled up with smoke, of course, we had to open up all the windows to clear it. The windows? The biting winter air rushed over me like the devil dancing on my grave it did. I got a terrible cold from it. It put me in the hospital for a while. I won't forget that birthday in a hurry. I knew it was devil worship all along. And then Trucy, I can now imagine Trucy baking, making Phoenix a birthday cake. Trucy gets Phoenix a birthday cake, and then just they're singing happy birthday for Phoenix. And then Maya, uh, Nick? Yeah, Maya? Maya, why are you interrupting Daddy's birthday celebration? And then just Maya, sorry Trucy, but the, the weird ghost attorney guy, he's glaring at us. We need to demonstrate who, apart from Mr. Natsume, could have attacked the young woman on the street. As well as how he or she could have done it. Yes, but once again, the juror's statements are full of personal prejudice. A lot of them seem convinced they're right, even in the face of logical argument on, to the contrary. I think you're going to need to put, put them against each other to force them to accept an alternate explanation. Yes. I don't necessarily need to find contradictions between their assertions. Just a connection, but you might do the trick. Alright, I'll see what I can do. If anything stands out, I'll go for, in for the strike. That's the spirit. Okay, let's go over to the final guy. Over to juror number six. Okay, we will pit you up against juror number three. Ju yeah, juror number three. Sorry, sorry. Just want to make sure I'm paying the right guy against the right guy. These two juror statements clearly contradict one another. They do? How exactly, counsel? Don't point at me again. I told you it wasn't me. Hmm? What's that you say? Speak up, lad. Speak up. Juror number three. You do you see? Oh, me? Say, say what exactly? Did you hear juror number six account of his birthday celebrations last year? It seems, despite being a Londoner, he once opened his windows in the middle of winter. Ah, well, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then you'd be mad not to open the... Ow! Oh! Exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, three, there was a fire at the Garadev household, and Mr. Garadev had the following to say about it. The whole, the, the whole place was filled with smoke. Ooh. Oh, my hat! Yes, just so much tea. All of that tea being dr being consumed. Excuse me. Juror number four, do you have something to say about that? Miss Garadeb. Oh, dearie me. What is the meaning of this? How dare you imply that I'm high who I really am? 
It's imperative that you confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drop the pretense now. Wh what is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? Why, I, I beg your pardon, why are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and bookcase caught fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if we did? All right then, yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window, which can't have been easy since I continued to give him a justly deserved book battering. Even though your house was on fire? Oh, you never stop throwing until the anger subsides. It would be terribly bad for the nerves to do otherwise. Of course, I should have realized. That's a significant step forward, Mr. Nerbudo. You managed to tell us that the window was open. We simply must have that address scared its former state formal statement. Pit you against juror number four. Objection. Those two states clearly contradict each other. I'm sorry, but the form as the foreman of the jury, I must object. That's complete nonsense. What? I'm a banker, don't forget. An educated man, and there's no contradiction as far as I can see. Quite so, Mr. Foreman. I will not bring a whimsical attack against the good members of the jury council. There was nothing whimsical about it, and that is true. That was a contradiction. It's, bit, it's very important to listen to every juror, Mr. Nerbudo. Then you can decide when the contradiction really lies, if there is any. Okay. Yes, yeah, that doesn't contradict. Okay. Okay. I'll just do a quick press just to be sure. So, you might be willing to change your decision, you mean? Oh my, such delight on your face. I'm afraid I can't be swayed by emotion. Despite what you may think of me, I am a very modern, metropolitan, and rational woman. That's great. If one reads the morning papers, it's all forgotten by tea time, isn't it? So why read them in the first place? You see, modern, metropolitan, and rational thinking, wouldn't you say? And not at all extreme. As I see it, an overwhelmingly suspicious Japanese man has been implicated by overwhelmingly strong testimony. So despite one two minor puzzlements, I do declare that this man is overwhelmingly guilty. Modern, metropolitan, and rational logic, wouldn't you say? Overwhelmingly. But us modern gals are always delighted to embrace new fads, you know. So I'd be only too happy to consider an exciting new theory if you could come up with one. I'd be happy to do that too, if only I could. Let's do our very best not to disappoint the modern and metropolitan young lady. Right, I'm glad you omitted rational there. Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay. No, he's not gonna have anything. Let's go in. Hold it. I just want to do another press. You just want to get this over with? How can you just sit there and say something like that? A man's future's at stake here. Well, you haven't been bald then, like I said before. What? I don't know me. I'm a day labor, all right? If I open up the blades with me at night, You'll find me blowing me down the stairs of all morning. What? You asked me my business is why there's value now. She be fierce, believe you me. Another shining example of marital bliss then. A situation like this crop of the other day, it was well, um, uh, you know, it's funny, but I can't quite remember. Sorry? It was too funny, that's the thing. I must have blocked it out. Helpful. I wonder if Miss Pete was at, will ever be dragged to the things by his scar. <laughs> Don't even go there, Miss Susano. Well, at least at least then Rolly will be able to sleep. There must be some way to jog his memory about this. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm just looking around. I'm just looking around. Hmm. 
Okay. Okay, I just want... Let's see if this is it. Objection. Okay! That was... That was bad. That was not good. Okay! Yeah. Let's just see what's going on. The fourth book found at the scene of the crime shows a very obvious sign of fire damage. And the title of the book is The Lion's Pride. The same title, in fact, as the book in, that Mr. Garrett had told us he was reading. Well, I really couldn't say. On the day in question, did you or did you not throw at your husband the copy of The Lion's Pride that he had been reading? I did. It was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I hurled it straight at him. And now you come to mention, yes. He was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the court from the onset? From the outset? Because I couldn't do it, a little man. I didn't remember it. At times like this, you can't, you can pick up and throw whatever you can lay your hands on, as are you well, you know. I really don't. I barely know I was doing a book, much less the title of it. Okay, there we go. There we go. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm liking this. It's like a puzzle. What is it, journal number five? No, no, I, I remember what it was. That memory I blocked out. Ah. It was listening to, it, it was listening to what this guy was saying, but I'll push back. Why are you calling Granny, you cheeky devil? I'm Mrs. Garadam, all the maid I'll have you know. The man doesn't even flinch. Please tell me that, that that's not because he's so used to being hit all the time. It, it was about two weeks ago now. I just got back home after work, like. I put my hand in my pocket for the wedding I was that day, and I nearly died. There was a hole. I was that thing had dropped out. Oh dear, what a disaster. You haven't heard the half of it, boy. Oh? The wife was cutting up some tickets at the time. I, I could hardly get the words out, but I told her straight. I've lost the day's words this love. And I got to the blood was missing out of my ear, sucking the wall next to it, about an inch deep. No words, just terror. And then at this point, Rinosuke decides to never get married. Phoenix disappears from the timeline. I can smell that, you know, that car will stand to the same. I was sure I was going to face down that money bank that night, I can tell you. Now, that's a real disaster, isn't it? I'll never use the word lightly again. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is this. When women lose their back, they'll be throwing money at you. Knives, hazards, hammers, people, you name it! One time she threw a title at me! Mr. Shizato, you mustn't think that all women are so short-tempered and unrefined. Just so you know, I will only throw you. I will only throw you down with the Suzao takedown. No, no, I wasn't thinking that. You better not, or else the Suzao will take down you in this courtroom. Throwing household objects at people as well? It's so uncivilized. Throw people instead. At least attack with honor using a bow or the like. What attack? Who are you going to attack? You, Rianasuke! Never mind. Anyways, this man's words could be rather significant, I think. All right, we'll come back to the bow and arrow thing later, if I dare. Susato will end you, Rianosuke. This is how Rianosuke died. Susato ended him. Hold it. I just want to do another press. Your wife really threw a kitchen knife at you. That's right, she was telling me for the hands I ate on, I believe. So, it's all memories, isn't it? It's all even that smile she threw me when we were calling. And since then, the list of things she's throwing me has grown along with our relationship. There was a cup, a glass, a pot, a kettle, a chair, a wardrobe, a cooker, a bathtub, a dog, a cat, a child. Your wife must be even beefier than you. 
I'm too good to act as I agree with you, Swoomy. Why the names? Still, she's not so bad when she's calmed down. She's a little sweetheart, really. And I'm not saying that because she got a baseball that she's gonna throw at me in, 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 from the gallery. I'm so happy for you. If you want to know what I think, I think it's why you have raised for us and we're so obsessed with this country. But stop by some couple of lads who've been done to the things that you guys too many by their wives. <laughs> That's a very interesting theory. <laughs> what a terrible thought. On the face of it, this juror statement just sound like a really extreme antidote. But I think it might turn out to be an extremely powerful weapon. A weapon I might be able to use to make the jurors accept an alternative explanation here. Okay. Objection. There we go. Those two statements clearly have a deeply significant connection. Good grief, you mean that they don't contradict each other? Explain, Council, at once. Juror number two, do you think perhaps... Now, this could be one such novel alternative. Oh my, whatever do you mean? An alternate explanation as to how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you talking about? We've demonstrated that the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, has found the scene of the crime, originated in the Garadev's room on the top floor of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other object besides the book could have, been found, could have found its way from the Garadev household to the streets below. Eh, uh, what now? After all, Miss, Miss Garrett have got thrown any number of different objects at their at her husband. But isn't that right, juror number four? What are you insinuating now, you, you little beanpole? I'm beginning to think that ever since the true origins of this book came to light, perhaps she's had a feeling this might be what happened. Now listen here, you ace and gala. As the foreman of this jury, I demand a straight answer. You give this us this yarn about some other object making its way down out of the house, but what? What is it? I'm really taking a big gamble here. That was a bold accusation to make, but I haven't any real evidence to back it up. But I'm certain that at the very least this warrants further investigation. All right, Mr. Foreman, I'll try to explain the defense's theory. The, object, the other object that found its way from the Garadev household to the scene of the crime was... Take that! Juror number four, Mrs. Garadeb. What? What? No! I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something else for this court. This knife. Have you ever seen this knife before? Ah! Uh, good lord, counsel. What on earth are you doing? That's the weapon that was lodged to the victim's back, man! My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Mr. and Mrs. Garadev were, at, were in the throes of an argument. Mrs. Garadev was hurling anything she could at her husband, who had been backed up against the window. A window that had been opened up to clear the smoke, and through which a book failed to land at the crime scene. You can't seriously believe that the book was found in the victim's grasp! Are you saying that it, was, that it was flew, that flew out of the window and across the street to land neatly in her hand? Oh, even my missus hasn't got anything like that. Yes, I admit, there are many details we don't yet understand. What's the, but that's the point. That's precisely why. We must not allow this trial to end. Not right now. Oh my. Ah! Mrs. Garadev, your answer please. Have you seen this knife before or not? Oh, ah, uh, um. Ah! My lord, I don't know. I, I wish to change my decision. I'm a woman of my word, after all. Thank you, madam. Yes, I agree. I certainly didn't see this coming, but... I just don't think it would be right for this trial to come to an end with now with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman. I have to agree. Not that I think the guy did it, mine. Yes, uh, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at the moment, either. All together now, all together now, ladies and gents.
we... we did it! Oh, congratulations, Mr. Naruto! So, as a result of the defense's submission examination, number of th a number of jurors' leanings have changed. Two jurors call guilty against four now calling innocent. Accordingly, the opinion of this court is divided. And this trial will continue. Now then, Lord Benzix, how does the prosecution wish to proceed? We'll answer that in the next episode. Anyways, I really appreciate that you took time to watch this episode. You're a great viewer, and I hope you come back for the next one. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share it to everybody you want. And with that, I'll see you next time. Bye.